everybody. It's me, Hetty, and you are definitely in for a treat today. Authentic Louisiana pecan pralines, New Orleans pralines, pecan candy, whatever you refer to it as, it is excellent. Excellent. I grew up my mom and grandmother making these, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I know they're authentic because my grandmother lived down in New Orleans for many years uh, growing up. So, born in Mississippi, moved to New Orleans, and she got a lot of her little cooking secrets uh, from down that way and taught my mama. And then, of course, I know, just passed down little bitty things. So, do this with me. It's so simple. You'll love it. In this bowl, I've got two cups of white sugar. Sometimes I use about, I don't know, a half a cup of brown sugar to one and three quarters cup of sugar. Today, I'm just going with all sugar because just that's how I felt like doing it today. One stick of butter, which is eight tablespoons. I use unsalted butter, so I am going to put in one quarter of a teaspoon of salt to make that like it would be a salted stick of butter, okay? Don't leave that. If you're using unsalted, which in general I use unsalted, but everybody goes, I only use salted butter, so you can use unsalted butter. That way, if you don't need salt, you don't have it in there. But if you do need salt for a recipe, like this one, you need a little sweet to balance, uh, salt to balance that sweet. So the rule of thumb is one quarter teaspoon of salt per one stick unsalted butter equals one stick of salted butter. All right, enough about butter. All right, so stick of butter, eight tablespoons, two cups of sugar, and a can shake well. I shook right before I started filming. A can of just evaporated pet milk. Boy, you hear that bubbling settling down into that sugar. Now, I'm just going to give it a just a quick little toss. Not really a toss, just making sure all that sugar is mixed in with that milk. Then, into this is going to go, in goes my salt. Now, I'm going to microwave this for about three minutes. Actually, about two minutes, just to help this butter start to get melted, okay? Then, I'll stir it one more time, then we're going to leave it alone. All right, so, it's going to go in for several minutes, and I will tell you the time. Remember, I have a thousand watt microwave, and to make uh, pralines right, you gotta get your mixture to coming up to a bowl, okay? So, here we go, going in the microwave. Awkward camera shot, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, you see, here's the microwave. I'm just literally gonna pick the bowl up and put it in the microwave, you don't need to see me do that. I'll bring you back in the next few minutes. All right, it's been three minutes, and I, I apologize. If you hear my dishwasher, the cycle just kicked back in. Okay, now, I only pulled it out. I did three minutes, not two. I did three. I usually do three. Um, this is just to give a good stir and incorporate the butter after it's uh, melting. Now, it's going back in for the, another four minutes. So, in four minutes, I'll see you back here. In the meantime, while we're on that second uh, session of microwaving, I'm going to show you, I have uh, just a piece of parchment paper. You can use wax paper if that's all you've got. And guess what? If all you've got is full, use full. It is easier to get off parchment or wax paper though. Now look, I take up, I keep these old cookie, these are older cookie sheets of mine. And I keep them for when I am making pralines and stuff like that. Just stuff I, I, you know, I don't care about. So I keep these. I've had these so long, they are pretty beat up looking. And I spray it lightly with them. And why do I do that? Well, it makes my parchment paper. Look how easy that is to position. Whoops, knocking stuff over, knocked the can of Pam over. I hope I'm not getting in the way of you there. Just showing you. I just go around the edges and get it. And look at that, wasn't that perfect timing? But I am gonna have to switch this around. But anyway, that's how I do this, and it sticks really well. And then I'll be ready to go when it's time to put the candy out. In the meantime, I'm just going to stick it up on top of my microwave and move on. Alrighty, as you can see, this is just starting to boil. So here is what I'm going to do right now is I'm just giving it a really good stir once again. Okay. And I'm going to put it back in for about another three minutes. I'm going to keep it. Your microwave will vary. 
and I want to also warn you about another thing. You need your bowl to be big enough. Because this looks like i got plenty of room, right? This is going to cook up. And then it's going to cook down. And basically, my timing's going by when it's going to cook back down. Okay? So I'm putting this back in. I may even go four minutes. I will let you know my time on this third segment. But right now, I'm going to aim for three minutes. But I'm going to put in four minutes just so I can watch it without stopping the process in the microwave. Okay? Again, I'll bring you back. Okay, I also failed to tell you, try to cover this with plastic wrap. Of course, don't use foil naturally, but uh, if you don't have plastic wrap at all, press and seal, whatever, if you don't have anything like that, then put a plate on it. Because I just want to tell you, you see this is changing color just a little bit, and I'm going to keep stirring this while I'm talking. See how it's bubbling? Because it's going to help thicken up, because in just a minute here, see I'm okay, it, it puffs up, and then it goes back down. It puffed up the microwave. I saw it. And I just let it go. So we're right at seven minutes now. And I'm stirring this down. And now it's not bubbling, right? So in goes, if I can get my spatula on the spoon rest, in goes my vanilla, two teaspoons. And I've got at least, I mean, two heaping cups of pecans. Now, I see a lot of people just buy those, don't buy pecan pieces you don't know what's in there chop them up yourself this is a very rough chop of pecan i took about a little over half of it and just gave a really rough chop now we always leave hole in ours because we just love it like that and that is traditional to have the hole in there as well the pieces started coming from people trying to stretch it so I, we like the texture of a little of both they look pretty too so anyway look I've given this a really good stir. My plastic wrap is going right back on. And this is going to go in for about two more minutes. But it'll have to go by look, so I'll have to let you know. Pardon my awkwardness, you know, I'm working around a tripod. So I'll bring you back in two to three minutes, and I'll let you know my time. Always pay attention by what's down below. All righty, I just pulled it out. I let it go for the four minutes. I'm going to come back in, and we're going to just stir this down. Stir, stir. Stir, stir, stir. You know, the weather can affect your pralines and things like that. You can ask anybody that makes candy, and I'm not a huge stove pot, uh, stove top candy maker. Back in the day, you know, we shelled our own pecans, but I'm just like y'all. I got mine at Sam's, and they're really pretty good quality. So anyway, look, you got to work quick. And I'm stirring these up, and I'm going to go about another minute or two, okay? A minute or two. So I'll bring you back. I just want to show you how I'm pulling this in and out. You don't want to burn it. If you just let it go straight and don't bother to stop and stir, you will have ruined pralines, okay? But if you don't go long enough, they won't harden. But I will give you a fix for that if you do run into that trouble, okay? I'll see you in a couple minutes or less. This is the very final stir. And I did go three more minutes. So, if my count is right, I'm in between. I'm right at 11 minutes, okay? So now you have to work quick, all right? So let me get rid of him. Let me switch this around really fast because i got to work fast. So let me move some stuff around really fast. Okay. I am going to show you, now I've shown you this spoon before, but my mama, when she did the pralines, she'd plop them out with this spoon right here, just like this. See? And she'd go like that. And I make big ones, but if you remember, we're making Christmas baskets right now. I just wanted to show you all that, because if I don't use my mama's uh, mixing spoon, I'd be upset about it. <laughs> you might think that's silly. I don't. It just makes sure that my mom is with me for Christmas. Now look here. I just got a soup spoon. Just a regular eating soup spoon. Out of your silverware drawer. Look at there. Because why? I'm making a good size that will fit into gift boxes. Okay? Or tins. Or whatever, whatever I'm putting them in. Or even bags. Alright? So... I'm going to continue doing this. When I get the whole cookie sheet done, 
I'll tell you what's next. And that's just waiting, the waiting. And what to do in case they don't harden. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I was sorry to cut y'all off so quick, but you got to work quick with pralines. Every time you spoon one out, give it a couple of stirs before you spoon the next one. Keep going. And you gotta be fast. Keep going, whether you're making them big or small. And I did overload. And I had three that went on this little plate. I just put some more parchment down. Now, I want to show you something. My kids absolutely love it when I do like this. What I tell y'all in the last video, they call this collateral damage. If they're touching, it means they can eat them. Well, I'll be watching them like a hawk because don't fret. If they kind of run together after they're set, just come in with a butter knife and just be careful. You'll be fine. But if you make them right, they're not going to be hard like the brittle tooth breaking kind. These are soft and nice. They held their form. They're not quite a fudge. They're not quite a fudge, but they're soft like a fudge would be at room temperature. That is not, not refrigerated. But anyway, these are going to set up. I'll come check them about, I don't know, probably half an hour. If they're not setting up, I'll discuss this with you. Okay. Otherwise, I'll see you then. Remember how I told you the weather can affect your uh, candy making? Especially with pralines, they can be temperamental. I usually do it. If I wasn't making a video, this would have gone absolutely perfect, but it does happen to me. I am not perfect. It happens to me once in a while. Now, I'm not an expert candy maker. Don't even think I am. It is not one of my things. Praline making, on the other hand, I've made a million batches and a few other things. And nowadays, I like to do it all in the microwave, <laughs> okay? All right, I'm gonna show you something. Remember those ones that are on the plate? I've already got them in here. Now, they look like they're setting up, right? And I am reaching around the tripod. But remember, these were one of the first ones. Now, they're here, they're saucer. They may set up, but it's been almost an hour. They would have been setting up better than this. I don't give them two hours like some people say you need, so. What I'm going to do is, it happens, and I should have known with the rain, I should have gone on and added another minute, minute and a half. So I'm going to pick all these back up, and I'm showing you a rescue, so don't freak out, don't throw them out. Now, if they're hard as a rock, I don't know how to help you to save that. I only know when they're soft and not setting up something that if you do it right, you can save the batch, okay? And I'm glad that happened, and it does happen. There's n sometimes there's nothing you did wrong. It's just raining cats and dogs out there right now, and it, it's affected me. I should have shot this on a different day, but hey, I'm on Christmas time crunch. Okay, putting these back in, I'll tell you what to do next. All right, I just scraped them off the paper. No big deal. I'm going to lay out a new piece of parchment. This happens. I should have known it. I should have added a couple minutes at the time. I knew better. But, you know, when you're trying to make a video, and I'm in the middle of a bunch of other recipes as well. I'm not doing just this today, believe me. I'm on a crunch. All right, you see, they're good. They're soft, and boy, they taste great. I, yeah, I sampled. I sampled. I admit it. But anyway, look, I don't edit out my stuff. If I screw up, I leave it in, because I am real with y'all, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to put this back in the microwave. I've got to bring it up to a boil. Depending on your microwave, it'll take, I don't know, maybe about three, even four minutes. So I will let you know my time, and then we'll go from there. And then we're basically going to spoon it back on, out on fresh parchment paper, okay? And then, I promise you, they'll harden after this. I'm just showing you, I'm stirring this halfway through simply to make sure that it mixed back into itself, okay? And I don't have hot pockets. So I'm in, in it goes. It's been uh, two minutes, but I'm going to probably go at least about three or four more minutes. I will let you know afterwards, okay? I'll see you then. All right, it's been in for a total of four and a half minutes. I did the extra 30 seconds just because. <laughs> you wouldn't think this third batch I've made today, and it's the only one that didn't solve set. But it's the one I made the video for, naturally. All right, here they are again, as you can see. And I have no question that these are going to set. So, just like I did before, I'm going to work quick. I'm going to put them out. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole tray. All right. So 
when I do that, I'll give you a shot and then we're going to let them set up for real this time. <laughs> Alright, take two. I can promise you these are going to harden beautifully. And when I say harden, I don't mean like rock candy. We're not talking about that. I'm just talking about where they'll be set. Because if I would have left those other ones long enough, they would have, quote, set. But not well enough to put into little Christmas baggies and goodie tins and all that stuff, okay? Because I don't want it sticking to cookies and everything else I'm putting in there. All right, I'll bring you back in about, I don't know, probably 45 minutes or so. I'll let hey, you know. I knew immediately these were going to set up right. It's been about 45 minutes. I've been doing other things. It might have been almost an hour, not quite, but I know. So, But look, I knew immediately these were going to set up right. And I do want to show you this. They're just like puffed up nice air. Not hard, not going to break your tooth. All right, let me put them on my pretty dollar store Christmas tree. <laughs> and I'll bring you back. So there you have it. Beautiful. Oh, and they taste so good. Yes, I, I did sample again. I admit it. So I've got you on your way. I've done fudge. I've done peanut brittle. I'm doing this. I've got a couple more for the next video coming up. It's called reindeer food. And everybody can put in what they want to put in, but I'm just going to show you how I, I do it. But I don't want to take away from these. Look, this isn't a Christmas thing. Do I make them at Christmas? You better believe it. But this is a year-round treat. Being from Louisiana, I don't know if everybody did, but I know I grew up eating these. And it was a fun time. And Mama said, ooh, I think I want some pralines. So there you have it. I am from Louisiana. These are authentic Louisiana pecan pralines. My grandmother's recipe, originally. And then my mother's, and now mine. Okay, I'll see you next time. It's your recipe too, Dale. <laughs> I'll see you in the next Christmas treat video coming up. <laughs>